How does it work to put together a baby lock regalia on a kinetic frame with a robotic pro stitcher? This is what the finished product's gonna look like and here's how I did it. Started out with eight boxes. Install the casters on the legs. Attach the frame uprights onto the legs. Lay out the bases on the floor. Use the Allen wrench to remove the rails. Set the rails aside and the screws that hold them on. Use the angle irons to attach the bases together. Using a five millimeter wrench, screw in the Allen screws. Attach the center leg with Allen screws. Attach the bed to the upright supports. You can leave the screws out of the ends because you're going to attach longer pieces on that later. Attach the legs on the ends. Using the longer five millimeter Allen screws, we attach the ends that will support the rail holders. Splice the rails together that the carriage is gonna roll on with the three millimeter screws. Turn the rails over and put the long side towards the inside against the black plastic. To facilitate the carriage rolling smooth, it will ride on this black plastic. Insert the four pieces of 10 foot long black plastic into the carriage rails. You can see that the long side goes to the inside. Place the carriage rails down on the frame. From underneath the frame, screw in the four millimeter Allen screws to hold the rails in place. Don't tighten them yet. This is the support for the fabric rails. We're going to use the center holes in this. We'll attach in the top hole. Make sure that the rails stick out over the front legs to the front of the machine. On the user's right side of the machine, these are the pawls that will latch into the gears. The latch slides in between the metal frame. Insert the bolt, the pawl, and the square bushing in that hole. This is what the finished pawl will look like in the latch down position. When you push the pawl up, it will rest on that support. That will allow you to turn the gears and roll the rails. Here's what the pawl will look like on the other side. Since we're setting this up as a 10 foot frame, we need to extend the poles with these inserts. Using a five millimeter Allen wrench, we'll attach the support for the backing roll. The backing roll supports fit about halfway down the outer legs. The end caps have a bearing in them and a bolt that wedges inside the pipe using these two wrenches. I rest the pole on my ankle as I hold the enter support and tighten the outer nut. When you're done, this is what the five left ends should look like. This is a close-up of how those fabric rails and batting rails sit in their supports. After securing the carriage rails, you need to mount this gear onto the table so that the pro stitcher can engage it with a separate drive motor. It's about 50 millimeters away from the edge of the rail. There's adhesive on the back of that, but you also need to secure it with screws and clamps. The take-up rail is the one with the handle. Below that's the idler rail. The quilt will wrap up around this take-up rail. On the bottom of the machine, you mount this rail that has teeth for the front and back axis. That would be our Y axis. This is the back side of the computer support. We're mounting that down with some four millimeter Allen screws. Now it's time to start plugging in cable. The power has to come off of the sewing machine head, so you have to remove the front cover. This power supply cable has to plug into that board. This is where you plug in the power supply for the computer. The cables are routed out the top slot of the front cover. Different models of computers may have different hookups, so I'm not going to detail that. You'll have to look into the manual. This is where the hub plugs in. This is the power supply going from the cord to the robot and back to the encoders. Now it's time to mount the spool rack. The handlebars have a unique wedge system. The oval on the handlebar slides inside the throat of the sewing machine and then the wedge and the bolt secure it. Here's the five millimeter Allen wrench tightening up that bolt. Then your handlebars plug in to the sewing head in the throat area. The handlebars adjust up and down, left and right, in and out, so you can customize them to fit you. These are the stickers and the explanation for where they're gonna go on the handlebars. Apply the self-adhesive stickers on the appropriate handle. 
Here's the second handle. Insert the bobbin case and we're getting close to being ready to sew. This comes with a lot of accessories, including a very nice automatic bobbin winder. You can do free motion and computerized sewing. These are cement trucks. This is incredibly easy and fast way to quilt. Another amazing piece of technology, brilliantly executed by Baby Luck.